Hey YouTube, this is going to be a little bit of a rambling, rambling video about something I'm working on. Um, I'm really trying to work out how far I want to take this and how much time I want to put into it. But basically, this is a power tool for photographers who are kind of a little bit tech savvy, use the terminal. Um, it's written in Ruby. And it started because my everything I do, <clears throat> everything I do in my workflow is done with the help of this one file. This is a big monster file where I can do all of these things. I can fix my directories. I can make copies. I can make Instagram versions. I can do tags. I can do all of these crazy things. Um, and when I started, when I started posting to Instagram, some of the things I was doing, I started seeing interest from other photographers. For example, I post three Instagram things a day. Here's my Instagram, not there. Where am I? Here I am. My Instagram is Kiefer Honeyford Photography. And I've started posting three, like this, three sets a day. Um, and gee, I hate Instagram. Holy crap. So I do it from the, uh, that's another story, but I post from the desktop completely. So now I've got it down to, I post three things. It takes me about five minutes total because I'm creating these square Instagram versions of images that just kind of work. So I'm taking a normal image and creating a square version that just kind of auto magically works. Um, and I'm spitting out tags. So I'm doing stuff like, okay, tags, extra tag one, extra tag two. This is the clever thing I'm saying, because you have to be clever in Instagram. And that spits out three things that I can just copy and paste. That goes with the first image. That goes with the second image. That goes with the third image. And every single one has 20 random tags. Plus, every single one has my tag, Kiefer Honey for Photography and Denver Photographer. And every single one has injected also these extra tags that I passed. So I'm enjoying Instagram again because I can do that so trivially easy. But I started posting stuff like this in my Instagram story and photographers started saying, whoa, that's cool. So I decided to take this mess and turn it into a product um, called Tog. Now, at its very simplest, so, so Tog, Tog is a a core product and then you can install different modules and I've, I'm writing a bunch of modules like um, I have an archiver, I have a declutter, I have an exporter, I have an Instagrammer, I have a resizer. But it's built it's built so that if you install TOG, which you can't yet because I haven't made it available, if you install TOG, um, you can, you can use these modules, but you can also write custom modules, but each of these modules is also very customizable. Um, by default, it'll have some default settings. For example, this is a fresh install of TOG, and it assumes that shoots are in a directory off your home directory called shoots, right off your home directory. So here's, this is working on my live stuff. Um, so, I can create a new set using this. Create a new set, and I'm going to call it video test three, because I've already got a video test one and a video test two. Yes, am I sure? Yes. Now, I don't know why that exited. We can absolutely, oh, because I didn't say yes. Um, we can absolutely expect this to fall on its face during this. Create a new set, video test three, yes. And it's created video test three, and it's created all of the folders in there that I use for my workflow. Um, and these are configured and totally customizable in the settings core file. So every single module that's installed, it generates a settings file with default settings. But I'm saying this is, finals is special and raws is special. These are always created. Um, 
I've decided my finals version is called 3-finals, but it can be whatever you want. I'm also saying that I have two workflow processes between raw and finals. So I can tell um, TOG, so what I do is I work in raws and then I, I export from raws into this folder. I work on this stuff in Portrait Pro and then when I'm done, I move stuff to GIMP. So I can tell, I can tell TOG to move this stuff from one to the next, from there to there. Moving into finals, TOG thinks is special, and there are all kinds of things that TOG can do in between going from here to here, which I'll show you, but that's special. Right now, there's, there are no files anywhere, so there's nothing going on. But the power of TOG is also that it's a command line tool. So I can go tog new video test four and it's just created video test four. So the same thing. I can do, go tog post one, tog post two, moving things from level to level. So I don't even need to go into that menu. Everything you want to do, you can do right here. Um, at the same time, TOG is also creating a symbolic link from desktop current, which is configurable, to the current set. So this is video test four is my current set. So if I go to desktop slash current, which I've bookmarked, it's going right there. So that gets really useful when you're jumping in, in and out of when you're jumping in and out of sets. But if I go to TOG, you'll see that it also has awareness of all of my all of my shoots in my shoot directory. So I can go straight to, if I go to five and go back to that symbolic link, this is now all of those files in there. So it's super fast creating, uh, creating, just creating a symbolic link like that and moving around. I can even do tog C and it'll open up file browser. I'm using Linux. Um, it'll open up the file browser to my current set. Um, let's see what we want to do next. Now, in now um, clearly that list is going to get out of hand. So my workflow is I have my working directories, uh, the stuff I'm currently working on, and I also have an archive. This is actually on an SD drive, so it's super fast. My archive is not. So I've built an archiver, and you can tell it where your non-current stuff is. So if I add tall, this may or may not work. Uh, archiver, so let's install the archiver. And it worked. So now we have a new, option that I can archive the set. But when I archive the set, TOG knows that all of my archives are in this, which is a symbolic link to another drive, uh, long story short. But I can archive off this set off into any of these things, and in this case it would be models. But working hand in hand with Archiver is another module called declutter. Um, and this is an interesting one. I'll show you, for example, here is the setup for declutter. This is the default setup. Um, and it's not probably not your default, it's my default. I gotta work out what I want defaults to be in these modules. But for me, when I create a when I create any set. I have a proofs directory. Sometimes um, I have discards. Uh, naming convention is not quite right here, but you know what? Let's just say, let's just do that. Now it is, I have just changed this, the default settings to be better for my system. Um, and this you will see in a second, but basically 
the settings are fairly simple. It's what what folders in what folders are clutter in in your um, in your set. Do you want to actually really hardcore delete stuff or move it to slash tmp where it would live until you reboot? Um, and this works hand in hand with the archiver. So now when I go to to archive. Uh, tog archive and it knows what the current set is. Say I want to put that to models. Do I want to declutter before? Yes. So this is what it's, if I say yes, this is what it's going to do. It's going to archive that directory to that archive and it's going to clean up all of these directories because for me these are all throwaways. My proofs they're all throwaways. They're they're created from. They're either the junk that I'm holding around, or they're created from my main files. So I could put yes, and that archives it. Um, let's look at some more modules, some more extensions. <coughs> tog install Instagrammer, and tog install resizer. These ones are cool, and included in. So this creates that Instagram version. It's going to create a square image 2000 wide. It's going to put it in Instagram versions. It's going to put a suffix IG dash and then the original file name. Um, and this is where it gets interesting. So tog any module can tell tog to to automatically do the action when an image is moving from along the workflows and hits finals. Um, and I'm also saying here, don't don't if the image already recreates, don't don't if the image already exists, don't create it. But let's just run, like if I run tog ig, this is a good sample set because it's because it's fun. Here's my current. Here are my finals. So I have two images. One of my vintage Honda uh, and the, the model said hey we have to shoot I've been told by my agency I have to shoot something like a Colgate commercial so I thought I'd have some fun with that um, but this just ran and created these two images which can go straight to Instagram same with tog resize is it resize or resizer? It's resize. So that's also creating those resize versions, which are maximum 2000. Um, uh, now I can go tog declutter and it's cleaned up it's deleted those as it would during Instagram during archive if I said yes um, but those things can also so those those weren't final let's take those images and desktop current so that's those stuff let's move those images to that's not gonna work I've changed my, let's do this move to this is my old naming strategy it is now as far as talk is concerned that so now we have now in terms of our workflow we have images right at the end of the process uh, so if I do and I do post workflow step two tog knows that this is the last step so not only is it moving it it's also resizing it and making the Instagram versions because I've told tog I've told Tog and the setups that 
I want to do that. Uh, <clears throat> so, what else have we got? This, because we're using the archiver, when I do a find, I'm not only looking for stuff in my current shoots, it's searching for stuff in the archive too. So I can do, say I remember, I remember that shoot with, that had the Vanagon, it had Vanagon in the set. Togfight Vanagon, it only found one set that matched that, so it automatically made that my current. Completely, oh no, it's the same directory structure. There are files in there. I think this is just, I don't know, maybe they're not, maybe they're still in there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm working on creating a migration extension so that if you go, so that if you start using tog and you go into a set that doesn't match the doesn't match the new directory structure that you can say, okay, images that are in this directory and the old one should be moved to this, kind of to migrate an old system to a new system. Um, and in fact, it already kind of works. Like probably if I do that, no, because it has three finals. So I, it already has the concept of the fact that that's empty is why this say I delete that. So this knows the final directory images are moving. So do you want to create it? So this error goes away, leave the directory, whatever. Um, and that's kind of my first step at going towards migration, but I want to make that an extension. What, what have we talked about? And what have, we've talked about the archiver, the declutter, not the exporter. We talked about the Instagrammer. Let's install the exporter. Uh, tog install exporter. Now the exporter is, I have this workflow where, so I have all my images and all my shoots, um, but I like to use, oh, what am I doing? Where am I, I'm here, there we go. So I like to use Shotwell, to store all of my, to, to basically, it's got all of my JPEGs. Um, it's got it's got all of my shoots I've ever done from the shoots and my archive. This is all of the final JPEGs from all of those places. Um, now, if I point shot well at my shoots directory, that becomes a mess really, really, really quickly. Um, so what Archiver does, or what Exporter does, sorry, is, let's look at the set earnings. So it says, where do you want to export images to? It ignores any, it ignores any path that includes that. So in my archives, you might notice I know this is a lot. Hopefully it's giving you a sense of what's going on though. Um, my archives, I'm, st I'm so a command line guy. Where's my, where's my archive directory? Such a, there. So my archives, I've got some of these archives, like random and tests and YouTube stuff that I don't want to end up in my export so um, I add the word no export like that. So it's ignored by this script. It also, historically I've had web versions of the originals and I've had resized versions. So I'm also telling the exporter to ignore anything that has that in the file name. Um, 
I'm saying yes, export the final images directory, but I'm also saying any directories that you find inside a set that have these names, then the, the images in there are fair game and they should be in the exporter. Um, I'm saying resize, which is really working out well because it makes, uh, it means, I mean, the purpose of really of these images is probably to use them um, for an Instagram post or a thumbnail for a YouTube video or something. So I don't need to have, I don't need to have huge files here. I don't need to have 30 megabyte files here. Um, so I am resizing going from to create those images. I have an experimental thing where I'm taking the EXIF date of the first image inside a set and setting the date to all of them inside the set because occasionally I'm getting where the same set is split over two dates. I used to get it a lot, but actually here I'm not seeing it at all, which is really good. Uh, so I may just pull that code completely. Yeah, I used to see I used to see weirdness like Thursday, August thirty first with twenty photos, and Thursday, August thirty first with another twenty photos of the same set that had come from the same place. But it seems like that was maybe a bug in Shotwell at the time. This is looking really good. Um, so then these images are they're nice and light. They're th maximum three thousand pixels, super fast, super easy to go through. And then Shotwell just makes, I mean, it's nice. I like it. What did I do in June? What did I do in May? Um, so how that actually runs is if there are images already there, it ignores them. The first time I ran this, it took about an hour. But now, tog, oh, that's a bug. Tog find. It shouldn't care that there isn't a current set because it's not dealing with the current set. What's going on here? Tog export. There it is. That's what's wrong. So it's every time it runs, it goes through all of all the files, and let's see some examples. So we already have those, so it's not recreating it. Um, It's all very boring, but if it had a new one, it would have processed it. I should be seeing skipped ones rejecting a set because it's in a no export. I would have expected to see some images that have been rejected. Yeah, rejecting because it's a resized image. Um, I can also run this where it's a symbolic link back to the original file, which some people might like, but Shotwell does not like that. Shotwell will not pick it up as an image. Um, but for some people who want an image, to, a folder that basically has, I mean, I can show you actually. Can I? Uh, exporter lib. I can kind of sort of I'm asking for trouble here I'm totally asking for trouble um, changing the copy I don't want to export into the same place so let's say I want to put this Now if I run, so I've changed the settings because I've said I now want my archive and shoot links. If this works, I'll be amazed. No, it's not gonna work because it's doing a resize. So it's still doing a resize. Yeah, it wasn't, this is not, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm wasting time here. There we go. So now if I go to pictures, see how fast that was? 
because it's not actually generating files, it's just creating links to files. Shoots links. So that just created all of these symbolic links to all of the suitable files. I don't know if I'm going to make that a configurable option or not. Uh, this is going to take a while. To, <laughs> this is going to take a long time to load. It's going to fall in space. Um, that's about it. Um, so why did I make this video? I guess I really made this video because I've built this in a way that it completely works for me. It's completely... Pretty soon, another day's work, and I will have replaced this and tested out some th things and decided what I want to include and what I don't want to include. And I'll have ironed out the bugs. And I'll have tested, for example, when I go from one workflow directory to another, currently. Duh, 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 duh. Oops. I'm doing more than just moving files and I've got to make sure that in the settings me and others can do things like add for advanced users if you're going from post one to post two I can add Ruby code to do something specific here and in my case I might have 10 images in that in that directory and I've only worked on five of them and I have the code that I can add here to take the five. So I've got, I've got 10 original five files. I've worked on five of them and I now have 15 files. So I have code that works out which of those 15 are modified fives and which are no longer necessary from those fives that have been modified and move the appropriate 10 to the next step. So I got to work out and make sure that what I've built here can support more advanced users adding Ruby, Ruby code here so that they can do funky stuff. Um, and I've got to add some other features and I've got to make decisions like right now. Jeez, let's go to show you what I do in my current thing. So if I K, it's K make tether test. This is my old system. Then I can, t then I have a thing that automatically launches tethering. My camera is not connected. So it's going to shout at me until it finds my camera, which is really handy because if my camera untethers during a shoot, I get this big long beep. But so I got to decide, do I include this in TOG or do I use this as an example of creating a custom extension that is just for me? So bottom line, if this was, if this was tidied up and usable and you had the choice of either installing modules from here or Um, like if you half the time you were using the menu half the time you were using tog ig um, you know you got to know that as a power user is this something you would use if it's something you would use can you think of other extensions that would be completely badass because I have to decide Am I just going to tidy this up a little bit and use it for me? Or am I going to put it into a repo and maybe open source it, um, get some beta testers? I got to make some decisions. So tell me what you think. I'm super interested. Um, that's all I've got. If, um, if this interests you at all, then definitely like and subscribe because I think there's going to be more TOG videos coming very soon. Have a good one.